evening. Tonight is the first installment of the Sleepy Bomb Show on Whitby Shores TV and Radio. And uh, tonight I am lucky enough to be able to interview the most esteemed Mr. Morris P. Rainville. Oh, Mr. Rainville, how are you doing tonight? Where are you sitting at? I'm, I'm in Sudbury, Ontario, Canada. I don't know if you heard that. Uh, God, I love your, uh, your finger picking and all your mandolin work you do. And I, uh, God, I really love In the Pines. That is like one of my favorite all time blues songs. But you put such a, I don't know, you got a different twist to it. Um, that just have, you must have been playing that since forever. No, it's not something I used to play a lot. I just, I, I like the song. And when it was time to record something, I kind of looked through the books, found a song that I sounded pretty good. And although I used to listen to Bill Monroe singing it years ago. You said Bill Monroe. So what, do you, what are some of your other influences as uh, you were growing up and learning how to play? Went back to Hank Williams, uh, and what brought me back in was listening to David Allen Coe and Hank Jr. That got me all excited about music again. With David Allen Coe, in fact, the song I wrote about it is exactly the way it happened when I picked up this 99-cent album called uh, Tattoo. And as soon as I heard the singer, I went nuts, and I started looking for anything I could find on David Allen Coe. <laughs> and I like the stuff he does. The way his voice is when he's singing, he's, he's got so much feeling in his voice that it kind of got me all re really interested in music again back in the 70s or 80s. Uh, you say again, uh, did you like, well, you just gave it up for a while and went to work or went to school or... In the 60s and 70s, parts of the 70s, uh, we did some recording, my wife and I, as the Rainvilles. We did a, lot, a few recordings and on the road for about 12 years. And uh, I took a change and took a job and, uh, you know, for the old retirement plan, the whole bit. And then about 15 years ago, I, after listening to David Allen Coe enough times, I kind of got all excited about music again and uh, did it part-time, in other words. Now I'll look for enjoyment. I'm not out performing anywhere, just playing around, enjoying it. Mr. Rainville, you inspire me. <laughs> you really do. Uh, that, that is just great. Uh, yeah, uh, Len's really pushing the uh, the old Rainville stuff. Is that, like, available anywhere? I, like, I would have never have known if I wouldn't have come to Whitby Shores that, you know, that there was, like, all this great music out there. So I really thank Len a lot but broadening my horizons it's just fascinating to to find out all this history all these these great musicians that you would never know about yeah in fact i i thank len also because i had forgotten all about that stuff we had kind of ignored this and i was doing some new so newer songs and everything and we had didn't even remember hardly any of this and len dug out dug it out on the internet and before we knew it it all came out again and it he, he did a lot of work with it, and I sure thanked him for that, because some of those songs I didn't realize were pretty good. But, you know, you, you hear your own things, and after a while you get kind of bored with them, and 25 years later you hear it again, and say, it didn't, that wasn't as bad as I thought. Yeah, that's fascinating stuff. Um And the new stuff, you, your, your musicianship, apparently, uh, I don't know what... what profession or trade you were in what, what did you do when you took your break well uh, I think Len knows that I took a job with a company in Canada that was selling wonder bra <laughs> and why would you you're asking why would anybody quit a job like that <laughs> I don't know man. but it was just a job I could think there would be a lot a lot of benefits in in selling wonder bras I could see there there would be a lot of like benefits that wouldn't even show up in your paycheck Mm, yeah, yeah, but it's like the song, one of the songs I have out called Would Have Been Here Much Sooner, it mentions that uh, the whole kind of whole story of working for the, uh, you know, for future plans and retirement and the whole thing, I guess. That's a lot different than playing in a band. And um, Is there like any special song you want, would like to introduce right now? Uh, well, the latest one I did, which I really like, is that the Little Birdie. My sister had a brand new computer and took started taking pictures, and she had pictures of her grandson, I think, a little boy sitting in the snow, and she put uh, bird seeds on his head and on his shoulders, 
and in the in the video you see the birds coming in and eating the seeds from the top of his head and his shoulders and you see a big smile on him and my first thought was I should borrow that from her and put it in the video and that's what led me to record Little Birdie so I could have a, so I could have a song to put the video through and in the next few weeks I hope to put a video on it using the little boy. Well, that's really cool. I, I noticed, like, you, you, more than a lot of people, you've got, uh, you do, like, little vignette videos, and they're very entertaining. I, I really do appreciate all that work. So, um, yeah, let's play one of your, uh, let's play your little birdie tape here, and you introduce it. We'll get that on tape. All right. I'd like to introduce this song that I just finished recording about a week ago, uh, whereas in some cases I was sure there was a lot of, very fast uh, guitar and mandolin picking and I was sure my fingers would leave my hands on this one a few times and the song is called it's an old traditional bluegrass called Little Birdie hope you like <laughs> this is great. Okay, I can like I don't know how long Len wants to go with this. I could keep this up all night because yeah, I just think you like got a whole lot to talk about. I could listen to you for hours. Is there anything you want to say? This is this is new here to me, so I'm not really sure. But I I re really have been enjoying all the music of Greg and Deb and Claude and Noella and your your music too. And uh, so I've been playing a lot of your, your guys' music, and it's kind of nice to be chatting together, although I'm not, uh, it's not like if we could all chat like in a phone line, but it's great still to hear your voice. And I really like your stuff, uh, Mike. And you're from Louisiana, are you? Uh, I was born in Las Vegas, raised in a jazz, traveling jazz Dixieland band, and ended up moving back to New Orleans in 69. And yeah, I've always been from here. You got a bit of French in you at all, or do you speak French? Or I know pigeon French. I I lived in Thibodeau, which is like right outside a Creole Cajun country. So I yeah, my mama was French. My my grandma was very French, and uh, 
Yeah, like the Cajuns have a, you know, they're very affiliated with uh, the Newfoundland. Yeah, I because I have a song. In fact, I was thinking of putting it on uh, uh, Whitby Shores. It's a French song called Sol Toi Pas. It's got a kind of a Cajun style to it. I, so I didn't know if you spoke French, but I will put it on in the next few days. Yeah, that's really cool. And, and I would think that that would be a natural for you, you know. I mean, you seem to play everything but the stinking accordion. I mean, you're you a very versatile uh, instrumentalist. A little bit on my keyboard, but it doesn't. it sounds part accordion. <laughs> I love it. I love Cajun music. I wish I could play it, though, but. Yeah, we get a fill of it down here. <laughs> There's, they're, they're they're on every corner, and it's, most of them are like very excellent players. You really it just blow me away with your your mandolin playing, and I'm so jealous because I I got a mandolin. I like yeah, I don't know if you saw Blue Sky Drive. That's me hacking away on a mandolin. I mean, how many years? When did you learn to play the mandolin? Was it early on, or like later on? You just picked it up. No, I picked that up uh, maybe 10, 12 years ago, and I haven't re- I haven't really spent a lot of time with it. But uh, once you can play the guitar, it, it's a matter of a little bit of time to get used to the chords. And I, I wish I could. I do a lot more on the mandolin. I, I, I just spend a lot of like basic. Uh, how would you explain it? I, if I prep prepare something for a recording, I just learn the parts and I keep going over them till I do it better. But to just keep playing things, I'm not that good on it, you know. I wish I could. I wish I could be better on that. Yeah, that's about with the same thing I do. Yeah, you just drill one part. I'm a frustrated guitarist, so I'm a really good bass player because it's four fat strings. Um, all right, let's um, oh, we'll wrap this up. What, what other song would you like to play for the Whitby Shores audiences here tonight? I think uh, the one about uh, radio needs David Allen Coe. I think that uh, would work. I would really like to. I really like that song yeah, because really it's. Uh, um, since I've always liked David Allen Coe and I always like to do a lot of his stuff. Um, as a matter of fact, one song that he recorded <clears throat> um, was Southern. Uh, what was it called? Now, uh, Alabama came out with it about three years later. A Southern Star. Southern Star. He did it about three years before, and it, he did such be- so much better job than they did, but it was never released as a single. And uh, I always wondered why, because it would have had a very, very a number one hit with it. Uh, but, yeah, I would like to introduce a David Allen Co. song, because I feel good about that one. <laughs> You go, David Allen Coe. Your music helped me sing for many years now. I like to sing again, thanks to you, friends. The radio meets David Allen Coe. Back in '82, found a copy of Tattoo. Heard your daddy was a God-fearing man. You play a sad song with beautiful harmonies. Now your music always lives inside of me. Where did you go? David Allen go? Your music kept me sane for many years now. I like to sing again, thanks to you and the praise. Radio needs David Allen Co. The Tennessee whiskey. A bottle in your hand Going way back to Mary Magdalene Did you take a little time off For bad behavior 
Pleasure, Mr. Morris. That was a real pleasure. <laughs> well, it was great talking with you. I I've been enjoying your stuff, and I've been enjoying what what uh, Len has done with uh, with the shores. It's really great. So I, I really enjoy that place. I've been working hard in an apartment in the last week, putting in tiles and subfloors and all kinds of things. So I haven't had as much time to work on, to go on the computer as uh, much as I'd like. Uh, but uh, I. Hopefully by next week I'll be able to get back on to a little more. Personally, I don't think you should ever have to lay another tile in your life. It's playing like you do. Somebody ought to be paying you just to like not work. Um, yeah, but Lenny is Len just been unbelievable. I did. We, uh, he's got like this beautiful community going, and I'm I'm really enjoying this. And yeah, Morris, this is really great, man. So I don't know. I'm gonna give it back to Lenny and just get the hell out of here for a minute. I gotta go take a tea break. So what, what you wanna do, Len? Hi, Mo. It's uh, nice that you came out tonight. Len is God, and I forget everything else you said. <laughs> uh, that's rock and roll. <laughs> <laughs> 